Well, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Cross-Examination. I am joined again by Will Schalter, and uh, today we're going to be talking about a lot of Halloween stuff, even though we're a little late for Halloween. Uh, we were wanting to do a Halloween episode uh, a week or two ago, but uh, uh, I took a little trip to Colorado Springs. Um, I'll, I'll probably be killing some people there, fictitious, you know, uh, coming up, so... So look look out for that. That'll probably be a, another uh, Ackerman uh, book returning to, to Colorado Springs. But uh, uh, before we get started today, I also want to promote a quick uh, Ackerman story that uh, short story that came out coordinated with Halloween uh, called Jack O' Lantern, and uh, it kind of goes back into you know it's just a just a short. 5,000 word story uh, that uh, goes back a little bit into Ackerman's history um, and has just a, a kind of a, a tale of him going, young Ackerman going trick or treating and what, what that looks like. And we also get to learn a little history of, of what, uh, why we carve jack-o'-lanterns and where that, that tale comes from. So, so uh, check that out. You can look on my website, uh, ethancross.com or you can go to uh, headofzeus.com and they have it uh, up there. That's my UK publisher. Um, and for all the German fans, it will be coming to you at some point, but it'll be a bonus material probably with the next book or, or something like that. So if, if you're able, if you can read, uh, read it in English, go uh, check out jack o -Lantern. So um, we're, we're gonna get started with uh, uh, something I wanna talk about today, a movie that recently came out on video on demand called Love and Monsters. And uh, I thought it was, um, I really wanted to, to pump this movie up a little bit because I thought it was a really, really cool movie. Um, just to, uh, it's just to give you, I mean, this, this is like the first, Within the first five minutes, you learn this. So this isn't even to give anything away. So it's an asteroid was coming toward Earth. We shot everything we had at it. And the chemicals and fallout and everything from that, we blew up the asteroid, but all of the now this stuff came down and created this monster apocalypse. So all cold-blooded animals mutated into giant form so cockroaches are 30 feet tall kind of thing so um people are no longer living on the surface of the earth it's like seven years after the the monster apocalypse and this one dude who is like in a bunker finds out or he he has learned that his his love who he was separated from when they were teenagers is 80 miles away in another bunker and so he is going to go across the surface through the monsters to reunite with his lost love and it's just it's such a cool movie with a lot of heart uh and it was just i, I had a lot of fun with it um and it's a really good special effects i thought dylan o'brien um uh, i don't know if you know who are you familiar with dylan o'brien will who's dylan o'brien um he was on i believe he was on a team wolf show i didn't watch that uh, i know my, my son was into it he, he enjoyed it but uh he he also was did the um uh, what was the name of it it was the mitch rap um american assassin michael Keaton. okay yep was, yep did, did you see that mm -hmm. that one yep. and i didn't necessarily see uh, i mean that's based on a book series the mitch rap uh series book series uh by uh vince flynn and um I, I really I didn't see him in that part. I, I I really I wasn't that impressed with him in that role. He's also done the Maze Runner movies. Yep. Okay. If, if okay. You've seen yep. them, I know, yeah, I've seen Maze. I've read the books, seen the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I know and yeah, I know which actor you're talking now. Okay. And and he I thought I mean Maze Runner, I thought he was good in Maze Runner. I did I didn't really buy him as Mitch Rapp. Uh, but in this movie I thought he was he was perfect. He was just, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of that quirky hero, but kind of yeah. Unfair. I'm going to do this thing, right? That's not really I shouldn't do, <laughs> you know. And yeah, it's, it really it ensues, and it's kind of scary, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, he really—it's you know—the movie starts out when when all this happens, and you have this like 
part where where they're attacked by an ant and it's almost like a scene from aliens mm -hmm. when this thing comes at you know and it's like somebody's killed and all this and then and then they're sitting there and he's like I i'm gonna go i'm just gonna go <laughs> He just kind of decides, and and but it's got a lot of that. There's just a lot of really cool scenes in it. There's there's one really cool scene where he finds this like kind of like before the world went down. There was this cutting edge kind of like home robotic thing that was coming. This uh, I forget what they call it in the movie, but he meets one of them, and it's got 15 minutes of life left, and and so it he kind of gets. It's just and and as they're talking there's these giant um, flying um, uh, uh, what's the word with the, where they produce their own light bioluminescent. Oh, are oh, you talking about like lightning bugs? Yes. Like, 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 like flying bioluminescent um, jellyfish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's, pl there's this music playing. And it's just, it's just, it's a really cool movie. I definitely, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. It's it's one that um, it felt like a real movie, like a like a movie you would go and see in the theater. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, we, we haven't had <laughs> haven't had that in a while. <laughs> haven't had in a while. I did go see Honest Thief. Um, if you're a Liam Neeson fan, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's pretty pretty standard Liam Neeson kind mm -hmm. of out there. It's not, you know, it's no Taken, of course, but it's it's a good. Mm -hmm. you know action film but uh but yeah 11 monsters almost felt like i know it wasn't the, that big budget film but it felt like that it felt okay. like it could have been you know even though it was a, a smaller budget film it felt like a tentpole type movie it, it really had a cool just you know uh, good special effects and good monsters and good you know i mean I, you, you can't beat a 50 foot centipede no no, of course not. Yeah, I mean, that's terrifying. It's yeah. there's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got some really cool, you know, scary monsters in it, and and so great, great movie to check out uh, if you're still looking for something for Halloween, uh, and if you're still in the mood for scary stories, we also have a few books uh, that Will and I would like to recommend to you. So, Will, why don't you uh, go ahead and, and jump in and tell us about uh, about your choice? Well, you know, since, um, Ethan, since you're doing, you know, short story and everything, it, it made me think about, oh, what about, you know, short stories? And um, when you asked me about this, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, because short stories don't oftentimes get the, the big publicity or anything like that. So the, the book I want to recommend, I have it here, is um, Rual Dahl's um, Ghost Stories. And um, you can probably get it, you know, on Amazon, no problem or any, it's, you know, it's, it's widely published, but not very often seen. So it's, it's a, it's a collection of short stories. It's not short stories that he wrote, rather it's um, him. He did some research at the British uh, Museum. And uh, I guess he asked for all the short story, ghost stories, basically ghost stories for the last 50 years. This is in, in the 1950s, he asked for these things. And the librarian gives him all these ghost stories and he picks out like his 12 favorite. And he spent, you know, months reading this and going through this and, and all this uh, and reading all these, uh, these ghost stories. And he's like, these are the 12 best. <laughs> and he, he publishes a, this book of ghost stories. And it's, it's great because um, the, you know, just, just a sense like a ghost story is so fundamental, right, to Halloween. And you even think about uh, a short story like, um, um, you know, the, uh, you know, Sleepy Hollow, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, very American ghost story, right? The Headless Horseman. I mean, this, that was, that's older than America itself. I mean, the United States wasn't even, you know, hardly around at that point. And we have this ghost story that, that is written, you know, at the start of America. So yeah, he, he uh, obviously isn't American, but, um, yeah, so it, it was, yeah, it was, it's really good. It's somebody really actually good. said I was, I told, uh, I told somebody I was doing a short story for Halloween and they said, oh, so it's going to be something like Legend of Sleepy Hollow. And I was like, no, it's not going to be near that good. 
No, yeah, yeah, it's like it's no, no, no. Sorry, you're you're yeah. setting the bar a little high here. No, it's just yeah. a fun little story. It's not, yeah. you know, like yeah. I don't. I'm not going in for this, like you know. Right, right. To think of to that. Can't piss it out to make it some legend, you know. That, yeah, yeah. Especially, I, I. What's so cool about that is is how, I mean, obviously we've done a whole movie, and they, of course, they expanded on everything. And there was a TV show, Sleepy Hollow, and all this, but just from that short story. But it was a self-contained, right, thing, and, and that's that's hard to do to take a take a whole, you know, real story that has a real beginning, middle, and end, and and compress it into, right, that short form. That that's actually what was my worry was with this with the Ackerman story that I was doing. Wasn't is it going to be? Oh, how can I make it long enough? Right. It's oh my gosh! Is this thing going to be end up being fifty pages? Is this going to be a novella? By the right. time I'm done with it, you know, I mean, I'm like, I just want to do a short story for the. Right. The, but it, I, it ended up working out. I think about five, five to six thousand words. So. Okay. Um, but, so yeah, great. Uh, thank you for. Uh, yeah. for, for what, what was it called again? Ghost stories. Yep. We're all dolls. Ghost stories. Yeah. Ghost and stories. it's a collection of uh, from different authors and everything. Yeah. Of ghost stories. Yeah. Cool. So the uh, I, I don't have them in hand, but a couple that uh, kind of I, I was thinking, um, um, especially with with love and monsters and what we're going to be talking today about the creature feature kind of thing. So so I thought of a couple of books that I could recommend to people that um, kind of have that creature feature kind of feel. Um, the first one I'll mention is probably a little bit more uh, popular. And it's it's also, Will and I are going to talk a little bit uh, here in a bit about uh, what makes, what, what is a horror film and what is, what is a thriller and what is, you know, a book film uh, either way. And so this first one I'm, I'm going to recommend really isn't, it's not necessarily a horror story as much as it is like an action creature feature you know an aliens type thing like that um but the the book is um i i should i should have looked this up beforehand the so i always get these two confused so it's ice hunt i'm pretty sure is the name of the book there's another one called ice station okay. by a different author that i read at the same time but this is james rollins um okay is the one so lo look it up it's i'm pretty sure it's ice hunt is the name of uh this one but it has a cool uh it's basically this cold war um military installation stuff starts turning back on and something's going on and so we send team up there to check it out kind of thing um and there's this cool kind of creature in it and you know a lot of uh you know good action and and different uh, factions of uh uh going against one each other uh one another and and james rollins if you have haven't read any of his stuff this is a standalone book but he also has some series that he does and his stuff is just i feel like he puts there's as much action in a hundred pages of his books as there is in most people's whole book you know in a 400 page book so he really cranked i mean it, they're really action-packed so so definitely check out him. Ice Hunt is a great one. Um, another one of his standalones that I love is uh, Amazonia. Um, so those are a couple to check out. But then another uh, series that I you might not have heard of, uh, but uh, that I would definitely recommend for you is a good friend of mine, Matthew Quinn Martin. And he writes a series called Nightlife. Uh, then there's Nightlife Hazardous Material. And uh, I believe there's a collection of, uh, of both both together. And uh, he kind of does, it's vampires, but it's not vampires. It's, it's like these vampires aren't the vampires that, you know, they're not your grandpa's vampires. Mm -hmm. they're, they're creatures. They're actual oh, okay. uh, cool monsters. So, okay. and uh, he, he, he really gets into, you know, it's kind of a different kind of lore and a different take on it. And, uh, I re really enjoyed them, so uh, I would definitely check uh, check out Nightlife and uh, Matthew Quinn Martin if you're looking for a for a scary creature feature kind of thing. Hmm. Um, 
Which brings us to something that Will and I wanted to talk about um, when we're talking about uh, thinking of uh, creature features and Halloween and uh, scary movies. There is an article published um, uh, over uh, some research done and what these people did, you know, in sort of scientific terms is they wanted to come out and test which movies are really the scariest. And the way that they did this was that they put, um, they took a, a group of people and I'm not sure if it says 50 people. So it's a, you know, relatively small panel size, but still it's interesting, you know, just to talk about them. I and obviously we're not getting any actual scientific right, right. data here. No. But so, so what they did is they went through, they actually picked out and curated a list from different online lists of the scariest movies. And then they put those together for um, uh, the, the 50 um, best horror films that they, they thought would be, these would be the scariest. And then they compared them. And mm -hmm. so the one that actually came out on top, I'll go, I'll go ahead and I'll just kind of run down the list and then we can kind of talk about some of these and, and talk about some of the what is missing from these lists and, and what what we can kind of learn and what you know what, what does all this mean. So the way that they they determined what was the actual scariest was that they monitored the person's heart rates and they found the ones with the the highest average heart rate. So as you're watching the movie where is your, like the whole time you're in a sense of elevated heart rate, you know, you're, you're, you're scared, your, your fight or flight instincts are kicking in. And then the highest spike and the kind of biggest difference. So uh, the, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll just read down the list and we can, we can go from there. So the number one one that came in was Sinister. And this was an Ethan Hawke film. Um, Will, I know you you recently rewatched that. Yeah. Right? I, I, and I, I know you weren't too surprised that this was. At yeah. The, um, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you know, I, it, it just it hits all the uh, the marks, right, of what, what would be a, a scary movie. Um, and, and the fact that, you know, I mean, I, I think it's kind of one of those things. It's like, we, we haven't seen it. It's 2012. So it, it hasn't aged yet. We haven't seen, you know, the aging process on it yet. Like, you know, some of the other older ones down the list, but it, you know, Ethan Hawke does a great job. He's, he's actually a writer in the, in the, I don't know if, if uh, the audience remembers, but he's a, he plays a writer and he's trying to come up with his best, um, his next big hit. And he happens to purchase a house and his family stays in the house. Um, and it happens to be the house where this family is, is hanged out in their backyard. And it, and I think, you know, one of the takeaways I had from it was, you know, what makes this film so great is, you know, is the, it isn't necessarily that the director shows you everything shows all the, you know, the blood and gore, you know, like a, like, you know, some other films, um, horror films, but instead he, he leads it, you know, some stuff to your own imagination of what actually happens to these, um, these individuals that, uh, that they see in the, in the film, um, mm -hmm. to kind of make your, your mind really, you know, try to process these things and get inside your head, uh, much like a, like a scary book, a scary novel, because it's all, you know, happening in your head. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I remember the, you know, when I read this, I, I definitely remember there being some, some really cool jump scares mm -hmm. from that film, you know, the mm -hmm. parts where, where uh, you, you see the, the thing in the picture and then it, its head turns towards you and you're, you know. Right, right. So, so you know, they're, they're, aware that it's moving and you're like, Ethan, it's right there. I forget the character's name, but you're like, it's right there. Right, <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. yeah. And and so, yeah, there, there were, there were some cool, Cool mm -hmm. moment in that. I did. I remember. I, I specifically remember thinking at the time when that came out, though, 
that the scary kid thing was really being overdone at the time. Yes. Yeah. And and so so it's interesting that that this one kind of you know, but I guess it had that uh the the kind of demon character. Um I don't right. know exactly what its name was. It was something like Raz al Ghul, you know, just like you know, from <laughs> that's like, yeah, that's something that's weird like that. Dad actually, was like yeah, Al-Ghul, yeah. But, yeah. But no, or I don't remember, you know. Yes. But yeah, I think the difference was, you know, what because you're right, you know, in the end, it's the it right get to people, but it's it's the daughter. But throughout the film, um, you never see the daughter do anything. You know, it, it is you know, it, it turns out to be kids that are you know doing these things. They're possessed by that that demon character well, yeah, but yeah and a lot of the a lot of the scares are like ghostly little children kind of thing. right and, right and but it's, so that was, that was a big thing at the time you know right the ghostly children yeah uh, <laughs> and it's interesting that that a lot of these ones right here at the top of our list are going to be um bloom house yeah yeah uh which bloom house just can't yeah. see enough good things about them I, no, yeah. I mean standard yeah. now i mean it, yeah it, i mean when you're talking about the horror genre you have to yeah i mean when you think horror you really they, they've really come in even in the last i don't even know how long they've been i mean i guess they've been around for a while because insidious is yeah you know fairly old i mean yeah. at this point but yeah 15 years probably somewhere around there 12 15 years I, yeah i don't know i don't know yeah. yeah i don't know i don't know what their actual first real one was i mean i know insidious conjuring all those you know were, mm -hmm. were when they were rising up mm -hmm. where they actually where the starting point was but mm -hmm. but anyway the next one on the list also um i don't know a bloom house uh film insidious which i think if you have not seen insidious that is one of the best or and this, it was a movie that was made for i believe the budget was a million dollars on this movie and it has some big stars so like mm -hmm. the the cast i mean you know like these were not completely unknown actors that are in it yeah. so, i mean the cast took a, a fair portion of that that uh, money and you can really see the way that they they did it it was just so well done mm -hmm. uh, as far as like uh the special effects Mm -hmm. not going over the top but yet it was just so creepy and you had this you had this world it opened up this whole new world and mm -hmm. i don't want to give anything away about it but it really it was, it's more than a ghost story that's what i mm -hmm. like i don't I, I like unless it's just a really exceptional ghost story if it's just a ghost story those usually don't mm -hmm. do much for me and actually that's i think that some of the specifically like third insidious film really just kind of eh. it yeah. was just a ghost story yeah. you know there was really nothing nothing mm -hmm. cool or different or you know mm -hmm. and and so but insidious great one on here um next one another bloom house one uh the conjuring mm -hmm. um i actually far prefer the conjuring 2 yeah to the conjuring yeah. uh which the conjuring 2 is a little farther down the list at number seven yeah um Good. Conjuring 2 is when they're in England, right? Yeah, and you've got the, yeah. the family that, uh, uh, yeah, and, and loves Conjuring 2. I think Conjuring, yeah. 2, Conjuring 2 and Insidious are a couple of, definitely the a couple of the best horror films of the past 20 years. I mean, right, right. Um, the, a little bit of information on, like, Sinister, what the, the average uh, beats per minute was 86 and then the highest spike was 131. Actually, the highest spike out of all of these was Insidious with 133. <laughs> so um, then Hereditary and uh, Will and I talked earlier, neither one of us has actually seen this film. This is definitely one I want to yeah. watch. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's in good company, of course. And, and notice that these seem to be a lot of newer films yeah it, it seems it's that that their list skewed a little newer and and we'll get into i'll i'll, I'll try to run through these read the rest of them just kind of quickly here mm -hmm. and uh and once we get out of the top you know 10 here mm -hmm. um but and then we'll go over some that we think like may may not even have been in their study that mm -hmm. really probably would be 
better additions. Um, so we got hereditary, or excuse me, hereditary, paranormal activity, um, which certainly has its moments. Um, uh, and, and of course, was for the way it was done. It's just, yeah. you know, that it was actually that interesting when it was all just, you know, yeah, dirty camera, the home video mm -hmm. footage, you know, and that they they mm -hmm. did a pretty good job with that. Uh, it follows, which is a, a cool movie. Um, I, I didn't think it was really all that scary. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it had some good, it had some good moments, but not. The, there are definitely the, some of this list. It, it would really surprise me. Mm -hmm. uh, and number seven was um, the Conjuring Two, uh, which, as I said, I think is I would put above the Conjuring, mm -hmm. the first Conjuring movie. Mm -hmm. uh, number eight, the Babadook, um, which we had discussed earlier, which we both seen the film, and I really didn't think that it was all that. I mean, it was a good film. I'm not, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, but it really wasn't all that scary, I didn't think. And it really, I, I was a little, to be honest, I really wasn't all, I was a little let down by it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, people talked, really talked it up and, and you know, it made every, everybody was talking about how good of, of a movie it was. And, and as, I, as I said, it's not, it, it's a good film. It's, you know, it's, it's very well done, but I was a little let down that there wasn't more to it that they didn't go into like what is a Baba Duke or yeah. yeah like there's what really no it? you really if if you want if you're a person that likes the monster and have an explanation and like actually yeah. know where it comes from or yep. then this is not the film for you. Right. And in, in uh, which and Sinister does that, right? With, you know, they give like this whole like mythology to the- Yeah, the and that's what I like. I, I feel like, yeah. so So there, there's a, uh, a thing that I think if we can give a little bit of writing advice here for a second, I think that is something, to me, it feels like if you don't do that, if you don't have that mythology, and maybe you don't even necessarily have to put it all out there, but yeah. you have to know it as the writer. Right. And if you don't, I think that just kind of comes across and it just feels lazy, you know, it just, yeah. just to me and, and not saying that, you know, I, I, I mean, I think there was like deeper things they were trying to say with that movie or, so, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to knock that specific one, but I'm just saying like, for me, if you're going to do a monster movie and you have this cool creature and that you, you should have some explanation of where it comes from, what yeah. it is where there should be some sort of mythology there should that's the cool part that's the part that is going to set this apart from all the other creature films that are going to appear on the sci-fi channel right uh, i mean that cool mythology and that that mm -hmm. cool creature that you've actually invested in you know invested that time in is what is going to set it apart so well, I, I don't so I, I i don't know about that babadu but yeah, I was going to say, and that brings up a good point because of The Conjuring, you know, Conjuring, Conjuring 2, and then I think, it, I don't want to skip ahead of you, but isn't Annabelle on the list as well? Yeah. Yes. So there's this whole like mythology that they kind of built in, and we knew, I think she's in the first one, right? Yes. And, was, and, then, and then the nun is in there as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, so they, they create, you can almost see like they almost had this like Marvel cinematic universe kind of playing out in the first Conjuring that we're going to kind of, you know, you know, do that. And, you know, you know, underline, it could have just been nothing, you know, but the reality was that they kind of built in, a, you know, mythology, even in that sense, you know, their well, past. And image. the interesting thing that I've noticed them doing is they'll like throw out, like, if you notice in what movie was it? I think the Annabelle comes home one. Okay. Uh, I didn't see that one. I think I just saw Annabelle. Yeah. Um, the, the, actually the, I think it was the second one, Annabelle origins. Okay. Actually, like that mm -hmm. one, I actually thought was possibly the, the best of the Annabelle. Okay. One. But uh, anyway, the, the Annabelle comes home one is basically that they, the parents are gone one weekend and some friend of their kids comes over and they get in the room and start playing with stuff. And then spirits are, you know, 
got all these different spirits. But what I noticed with what they're doing with like that one, they had they introduced like a few different stories. And then now they're think now I've heard that like, oh well that one might they might make a movie out of that one. Like mm-hmm. almost like they're gauging people like, oh, do they really find this boatman guy scary? Yeah, oh, yeah. Then if that's cool, then we'll like throw this whole mythology <laughs> thing and that'll get its own movie and an origin story and all that. And yep. it looks like they're almost doing it like a like superheroes only for yeah. Yeah, like yeah. scary ghost characters. So right. yeah, I mean, uh, hey, it's, it's pretty it cool. See, you know, yeah, it seems to be working. Yeah. So, uh, the next one, the descent. Um, I, I I assume you've seen the descent. Mm-hmm. The where the, the the this group of women are going um, cave diving and they mm-hmm. get trapped in there and uh, and I would definitely that's yeah. I mean that's yeah. an intense, yeah. intense movie. Not only for the for uh, these these creatures, these underdwelling kind of things. And actually, it, it's interesting. I know there's a there's a book by uh, Jeff Long that is also okay. the Descent that that deals with these creatures and basically the same kind of huh. thing. Only it's not, it's a different story. You know, I mean it's like this bigger story of like that like these creatures are popping up all over the world and there's this kind of like they found these there's there are these series of caves under the ground where there's whole of the race of underdwelling uh, homo sapiens or whatever you know are hmm. living. but also from the same name and and so yeah it was kind of when i think that came out first and so i think i don't know if there was i think there might have been some legal stuff there too but <laughs> um but but check that out that really very two different two very different things so check out jeff long's book the descent uh if you're looking for a cool if you you know if you like that the movie and that idea but as i was saying the the movie really it's not only the um these underdwelling creatures that are that are the bad guys but also the claustrophobia of all of it uh you know being trapped in the caves and and going through the caves and the, the tightness of <laughs> all that, that really makes that movie scary. Um, the visit um, is a M night Shyamalan movie. I really, as we were talking uh, earlier, I really, I hit, that's the only M night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. Here is on here. Yeah. And I totally would not put that, that, that wasn't even, I mean, that movie was like, you know, had some moments. I mean, it's a good, it's a, it's yeah. a good movie, but really I wouldn't even put that as one of his no. top. I, no. uh, as, as we were talking about signs really was such a better horror film. I mean, really, I think, sure. uh, I mean, if you take away the whole unbreakable um, trilogy, Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's probably his best his best work, and and there were some yeah. really great moments. Uh, mm-hmm. One in particular that comes to mind, where where she she comes in and says something like, I don't remember the exact line, but she says something like, "Daddy, can I have a glass of water?" And there's a monster outside my window, or something <laughs> like that. And he goes, <laughs> in, and of course, he doesn't. He's you're thinking. Go. He says, "There's a monster. Go check the monster." And he's thinking, uh, you know. "Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's kids." Yeah. And he's getting the glass of water, and then she, at some point, she points and says, "No, I'm a monster." And he turns and looks, and then you see what he sees, and this shadowy figure on top of the barn there. And when it, when you see that, yeah, and you really just feel the. I mean, there was a long time after that where I would like lay down to go to sleep and I'd be, and I think I'd picture our doorway there, you know, and I'm like, there if I is. looked right now and saw that thing, like I would just, all of my bowels would evacuate immediately. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they're just, just terrified. And, and so, and it had a lot of great, um, uh, you know, I, I think Sean, uh, M night Shyamalan is definitely a, a Hitchcock. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it had a lot of this, 
you know, building of the suspense, but, uh, but a lot of great horror move, uh, horror moments, uh, mm -hmm. like we were talking about earlier, how it, in a lot of ways, it's kind of slow. Um, but then all of a sudden it would like slams you in the face with, with something, you know, like where you think it's like slow, like you're having like a character moment. And then, and then the dude's like, well, actually it was, it was the director himself, M9 Shyamalan, who was playing the character. Yeah. Yeah. When they're, when they visit that guy's house and yeah, when they visit the doctor's house, and he's like, yeah, I got one in the, what is it? The pantry in the room or yeah, what was it? Yeah. It goes, by the way, he says something like right at the end of the conversation, like they've had the kind of goes, by the way, don't open my pantry. I trapped one. I caught one and you know, sneaking in my house or trapped one in there or something, you know, and you're like, what? Yeah. You yeah. trapped one. Like you got one. What do you yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you go in and he like tries to look under the door and see it and you see the shadow and then the claw comes out and and it's just yeah, very cool, yeah. scary movie and and lots of really cool creep, you know, really I would think would be really building the suspense and then really had a lot of good uh, jump scares. And and not only that, but it was it was really a movie, it was a deep movie, you know, it was yeah. a movie about faith. Mm -hmm. to the backdrop of an alien invasion yeah and, uh, and i thought that was really cool you know it was actually the character you know lots of great acting i mean mel gibson um really during mm -hmm. his peak period yeah definitely yeah Dean phoenix who is of course always great yeah um you know the kids were great in it i mean it was really you know but but you know kind of a small again, that kind of claustrophobic kind of feel to it. Yeah, you, you're, because I remember, you know, even how they have the, the thing set up, they're in that farmhouse and the house is surrounded by corn. So it's mm -hmm. almost like from the get-go, your your field of vision is is blocked. Because you remember there's one scene where he runs after the alien or whatever, you know, the monster, and he has to go through the corn and, right, I mean. Yeah, and you see what's put in the corn and, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, and of course, I, I mean, what's scarier than going into that field of corn and you can't see what is around, you know, but yet, yeah, it, nothing for something to come to you. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, you, it, it's a very scary, it's almost like swimming in dark water. You pretty know, much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would put that way above the visit. Um, yeah, even, even, you know, if we're looking at this list, like it was compiled by people that were younger, I'm, I'm surprised we talked about this with Split. You know, we talked about Split. I, I thought Split was better than, you know, The Visit. Yeah, and Split certainly, uh, I mean, that's as we were kind of talking about, like what what really makes it a um, a thriller or mm -hmm. a horror film or an, an action adventure or, or that. And what what something that I had mentioned when we were talking about this, you know, before the show, um, was that I think it's really it's the villain. Mm -hmm. the, the the villain determines the tone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. especially if that villain is a uh, something supernatural or a creature or or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, then it really goes into the horror area. And then how far it goes mm -hmm. determines that tone. You know, like like I had used uh, the example um, that you could have like a doomsday cult and say you were going to have a, a movie that was about a doomsday cult. It could be an action movie. Yeah. It could be a horror movie. Right. And whether or not it's an action or a horror movie is kind of determined by the villain and mm -hmm. what they choose to do. And that kind of sets that tone. You know, if they're if they're compiling guns and ammo and bombs and they're gonna storm the White House or right. they're gonna do whatever, you know, or they're they're domestic terrorists, well then it's it's, it's, yeah. it's an action movie. The but if movie. they're like if they're trying to, you know, raise some demonic entity yeah. and they're sacrificing people to do it, then that's gonna be a horror movie. It's totally you know? a horror movie. We're out of the thriller genre. Yeah. Right. And so <laughs> And so it really, I, I think that is, uh, it's that the villain setting the tone that, mm -hmm. that really kind of separates a thriller or action adventure from, from horror. Mm -hmm. um, so 
Well, I'm going to, I'm going to just read the, the, the last part of those. So that's the top 10. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the, the last ones here and then we'll kind of throw out a few that we think okay. are absent from the list, but should be on here. Okay. So number 11, the ring. Number 12, a quiet place. Number 13, a nightmare on Elm street. Number 14, Halloween. Number 15, the Texas chainsaw massacre. 16, 28 days later. Number 17, The Exorcist. Number 18, Hush. 19, It. 20, Scream. 21, The Grudge. 22, The Witch. 23, The Blair Witch Project. 24, Alien. 25, The Thing. 26, Poltergeist. 27, Annabelle. 28, Friday the 13th, 29, The Orphanage, 30, Dark Skies, 31, Wolf Creek, 32, The Omen, 33, The Shining, 34, Get Out, and 35, Audition, which I haven't seen Audition. I didn't, that one. No, I didn't, I didn't know that one. Yeah. Um, so of course we we so we've got uh, a representative here of of all the different um, um, you know we we've got the big slasher guys we've got Freddy Krueger we've got Jason Voorhees we've got Michael Myers with Halloween we've got um, uh, what was was another we got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm -hmm. um, of course The Exorcist is another one that you know a, a, a lot of yeah. people have claimed to be the scariest movie. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of these make sense. Uh, a few that uh, the the biggest one that came to mind. Well, first first of all, let's talk about number twenty four on this list, which yeah. I I think it should be these should be way higher. I think some of these ones that yeah like we talked about the Babadook and. Yeah, these Babadook ones. is. I'm real. I'm, I'm, alien? No, no. No, I mean, I really, I'm really surprised by some of these, some of these here. Yeah, like that the the Babadook, like Alien, Alien doesn't even have its listed on this. On no. what I'm listed, it's far enough down the list that it doesn't even have the beats per minute no. listed. And I'm like, Alien, like yeah. terrifying movie. And, yeah. and something that we did talk about, I actually far prefer. I, alien is a great film. Mm -hmm. its own right i mean um i love it actually i actually listened just listened to the uh an audible um drama that was about a two-hour audible drama that was based on a uh original script for alien three oh, okay a abandoned script and they actually got michael Bean and uh um sigourney weaver no sigourney weaver wasn't but uh lance henrickson Okay. Yeah. And so he was Bishop in the story and all that. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, it took place immediately after aliens. Right. Go up and, and Hicks is in it and, and all this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And it was interesting because I saw there were a lot of um, elements. Like it, if this was the actual script, I don't know how much tinkering they did with it to, to turn it into this audio drama. But if this was the actual script, it actually everything that came after it just basically just stole ideas from, from this script. And I'm not saying this was, it probably, I, I listened it was, you know, not knocking it, but it wasn't, it wasn't the sequel to aliens that I wanted, mm -hmm. but it had a lot of um, like, you could see where alien resurrection took ideas from this. Mm -hmm. You could see where Prometheus and mm -hmm. uh, uh, was a, a Revenant, alien. Oh yeah, covenant. Is that covenant? Right? Covenant. Yeah. Alien covenant. Mm -hmm. um, you can really see where they took some ideas from it, and it's like alien human hybrid, and the idea mm -hmm. of you know not having to you know this kind of like a virus type thing, which mm -hmm. I really didn't like. I, I no. thought it didn't like that aspect of it. But you know, so so there was kind of that. Check out Audible. Um, it's actually just called Alien Three. On, okay. Um, if if anybody's likes audible dramas, but Aliens, I think was actually a scarier film than, in my opinion, than the first oh. one. 
definitely because alien like in the first alien movie it was like you had that feeling of like okay yeah it's scary but there's one of them yeah yeah you know what i mean like okay we've got it we've got it it's it's scared of fire we're gonna right drive it over here and blow it out the airlock or we're gonna do yeah. you know what i mean like the in that other one it was like they're everywhere they're like they're, cockroaches they're what yes. do we do? they've taken the whole colony and they've got them you know and up I, against I, the wall and they're breeding you know they've got yeah. them resined up and you know like their hive yeah and, and so i actually remember in the first aliens movie it was one of the very one of the only movies that i've ever stopped and i remember i remember watching it on vhs and i put the head was watching it on the vhs tape and it was the middle of the day that i was watching it and I, I, that's doesn't matter it doesn't matter, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It was the middle of the day and i was still yeah. terrified and when it got to that part where they were up on the walls and you see it's like families and kids and and you're just like, oh my gosh, like this, it's just that, that no escape. What do you do? There's not, no fighting back. There's no, you know, just terrifying kind of thing. And they go in there and it was the part where they come across the first person and they, they kind of, it, this person wakes up and they're saying, kill me, kill me. Mm -hmm. And the thing bursts out of their chest and, you know, and all mm -hmm. this. And I remember like the kill me, kill me and all that part. And I remember just, stopping the thing yep. and just going getting up and being like i'm just gonna go outside <laughs> makes you've been out around here i'm like i'm and mom and dad like i wasn't mom and dad were out working outside doing something sure. you know sure. so i was in the house alone i'm like yeah i'm gonna just go see what they're doing now maybe mm -hmm. come uh, back yeah yeah and so yep. and i actually i did go out back and you know finish it and everything but yeah i, I remember yeah. really being freaked out about that um, so that, there's one that, and another one that we talked about that was uh, absent from this list is Predator. Yeah, but that's when we got into the conversation about genres. Is, is Predator an action film or is it a horror film? It's got Arnold in it, you know, and it's high, you know, the, the height of Arnold's career, you know, it's in the 80s and everything, right? So, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It's, it is kind of like people put it like it's commando you know or, mm -hmm. or one of those action movies. and it's really it yeah. it is not that at all it is I, I think that was what what the great thing about predator was um was that it was arnold like you could have had a different actor it, sure. was, it wasn't awesome because arnold was in it no. it was different. awesome and you could have had any actor yeah as the and I'm, I'm of course I shouldn't say that of course yeah but any I mean you could have had Van Damme you could have had you know Steven Seagal you could have had any 80 type you know actor and it would have been fine yeah interesting and interestingly enough they did have Van Damme I don't know if you know this story oh Van they did Damme, Van Damme was originally hired oh, yeah? to play the alien oh and okay. and it was a very different looking alien oh, and okay. it wasn't and. And he, I think he, he was basically like, I, which I think they kind of led him astray. I think they like made it like, you're the villain, you're the blah, blah, blah. You're yeah. the, you know, and then he gets there and they're like, what? I'm in a rubber suit. You, you, know, you never see my face. Never right? see my face. Like I don't speak. <laughs> like what? Yeah. You know, and I think he was, I think he was kind of like, this isn't what I signed on for. Yeah. So anyway, then they got, uh, Kevin Peter Hall, I believe is his name. Okay. I I that, but. But okay. yeah, you got the big guy for for Predator. And that was the cool thing is it was like Arnold was so tough. And so, you know, you so believed how tough Arnold was in that movie. But then here's this thing that Arnold's no match for. Right. So, right. so it really, I mean, but it was, it, it was so much of a horror mm -hmm. and had so many horror elements of just, the building up to it and the suspense yeah. and the thing that it's watching you and right there's this and it had this cool creature and just i i i really think i don't know how yet because that one too has that sense of like what do you do how do you fight this thing yeah yeah you, know, he, I you mean, can't see it and he can see you and he's bigger faster stronger i mean yeah how do you win right yeah i mean there's just that yeah. sense of of helplessness and yeah, yeah. Just is is very very strong because even 
you've got these guys that are like these toughest guys in the world and they're helpless against yeah. this thing. And yeah. so, you know, it really kind of creates that, uh, that sense. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I definitely would think predator. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't even see the creature until, no. uh, until all of them are, are pretty much dead and, mm -hmm. and it's just Arnold. And then you mm -hmm. kind of, isn't actually, I remember when I watched, when I first saw Predator, I was, we had like a partition in our living room. So there was okay. like a hallway and then there was a partition here and you could see the TV from okay. the side. So what I did was I, as a, a, I don't know how old I was when, when the film was rented, but mm -hmm. my mom and dad and, and their friends or whoever okay. at the time had rented this movie and were watching Predator. And I wasn't supposed to watch it because it was, <laughs> you know, like, you know, R-rated right. and right. scary yeah. and all this. Sure. And I remember like crawling down the hallway mm -hmm. and sitting by that partition. And I could just, sit, you know, just sitting there like little boy watching yeah. Uh, yeah. Predator and, you know, and I remember just being absolutely terrified, you mm -hmm. know, just, just looking at like, Oh my gosh, you can't see it. It's invisible. And what, what is it? And what, you know, and then I remember, I specifically remember that scene, that first scene where you kind of get your first glimpse of the creature where it's been injured and it's kind of repairing itself and it screams, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, just, yeah, great movie. And I, I, I really, I don't know how that would not, be higher on this list yeah very, again very I, strange yeah because again i mean i think it's one of those films you know i haven't seen it in years but i think if you take took these same people especially people that have never seen it before because i think the special effects would kind of hold up i mean there's obviously parts where it'd be cheesy you know but like you said you don't even see I, the thing i mean it's not like it's you yeah, know it's, it's mostly, mainly practical effects and really the the light blurring effect you know might look a little cheesy but it's really it's just blurring of light so it's not yes. yeah it's, it's not, not like it's not supposed you know i mean it's I, I most and like you say the all the creature effects are practical effects so yeah. it, it holds up pretty well there's no cgi really yeah exactly i remember watching it and i actually i saw the television version and what made that was terrible you know, because I watched it as a kid, so you could watch it on television, right? That's how I got away with it. Because who cares? It's on television. And the problem was commercials. Mm. So I'm sitting there as a kid, you know, like my, my parents, it's like a Saturday, right? And they don't know what I'm watching. I'm watching this glue. And I'm like, no, what happens? You know, and you know, here's Downey Bear, you know, coming on there yeah. and Lucky Charms. And, and then like, you know, waiting for, you know, it to get back to the story. And here he comes. And there's Arnold, you know, in the mud. And it's, and it's you know, about to, you know, kill him. Like, oh, no, run away, Arnold. And he figures out that it, it sees, you know, you know, uh, right. by infrared and all that. Yeah, so it's, yeah, great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, and talk about suspense killer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kids these days don't really know what commercials are. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of which, I was in Colorado Springs recently, and this is this is totally off topic. But I, okay. I was walking along, we were going to the Royal Gorge uh, train mm -hmm. train that goes down the, uh, along the Arkansas River there, the Royal Gorge. And uh, I'm walking along, and there's a phone booth. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, a phone booth!" And I, I'm like taking a picture. I like yeah. to get in there. We were on our way to get somewhere else, but if if we weren't. I would have stopped and like call. I wanted to call people and be like, "What year is it? Is it is it like 1984 right now? Am I calling you from the future? Like, what is is this a time machine? You yeah, know, like what is Why this is strange? What is this strange object? Right, so right. I, I, I mean, you don't even see them in like, I mean, no. you know, like New yeah. York and places oh. like that has phone booths anymore. So it was crazy. Yeah, that I saw in the picture. Like I didn't, my wife asked me like, did you go up and see if it actually had a ringtone? Yeah. But we see in the picture, there's actually a cable going out, you know, like a new looking con right. box and everything. Right. So I'm thinking this is an actual phone, pay phone. Yeah, I think the last time I saw a pay phone was like the international terminal in Chicago. Because the idea is you're, you you don't have a cell phone in that in an America. You, you call up, you know, who's ever picking you up or, you know. I think they got rid of those now too. I mean, I just don't think 
yeah, we see them anymore. <laughs> you know? yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. So what what are some of the other ones that we so um, ones that are kind of conspicuously act ac- absent from this uh, a horror franchise Hellraiser. Yeah, Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. Well, I mean, I think yeah. terrifying. You know, yeah. I think who who does? I mean, Clive Barker, man, he, he you know, yeah. the gore and the and especially, I actually, I think the second one was um, I thought oh. a little actually even more terrifying. Yeah, they kind of because it was it was more they the, they they kind of go right together. You know, yeah. actually, I if I remember correctly, and I wouldn't swear to this. They are actually ba- the book that they're based on was actually both of them. Oh, and they just split up the book. And that makes sense. And, they- and so, yeah, and they kind of like put an ending, and then and so I think they the first two, and then after that the series kind of goes. Yeah, it just goes bonkers. Yeah, you know, yeah. And yeah. then they, they became you know just kind of horror, you know, schlock. Movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but the first I- two, the first two, you can actually. And the same thing with, you know, other ones on this, you know, the Friday the 13th ones and Halloween, you know, the right. first, the first couple Halloween, you know, the, the first Halloween movie, I, I, you know, classic. Yeah. classic, I, you know, you, you, you just can't dispute it's, it's really, it's a serial killer movie. Yeah. 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 And it's just a really cool serial killer. You know I mean? You, you're, you're, there's not a whole lot of difference between something like that and something like Silence of the Lambs. Right, um, but then they other ones they get into more that's okay now he's supernatural and now he's this right. you know yeah we kind of get off the the rails. You mentioned yeah. uh, Saw. Remember, uh, none yeah. of the Saw movies were on this list, and we're kind of like I get it, you know why Saw you know five or six, but I mean yeah, the first Saw film. I mean definitely. Why it be on I mean list? where you're yeah where you're you really have that sense of. Uh, you're th- you've been kidnapped and you're thrown into this thing and now you've got to do something terrible um, right you know, like saw off your own foot to, of course where, yeah. the, where the uh the thing comes from yeah and and, and much more terrible things than that and of course it, then with each one it gets more gruesome and more inventive and and mm-hmm. things like that but the the first one there another one that it, you know comes to mind as we're talking about like saw and stuff is like seven you know, oh, yes. and, and, and what I've noticed with this yeah. list is that they, they've skewed more towards like the supernatural stuff, but we've certainly right. had a few, you know, Halloween, Scream, mm-hmm. a few ones like that, that, uh, you know, where it's not a supernatural villain. So mm-hmm. if you're, if you bring in ones that are like Silence of the Lambs, Seven, things like that, that you could probably consider more of a thriller or, a mm-hmm. but they're definitely bordering on horror yeah. territory. Yeah. Yeah. And as we said, you know, you've got this villain that yep. is, I mean, it's, it's pretty hard to say seven is not, I a mean, the, the only thing you could say about seven is that you're not seeing it happen. It's, yeah, all, happen. it's all a mis- It's all after the fact. And right. so, Who is this person that's doing these seven deadly sin things on these people? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so you, you could say, obviously, if it was, if you were seeing any of it happen, then it was, it would be. Mm-hmm. easily a horror film but uh other, otherwise so i mean yeah there are a lot of ones that kind of um the saw films uh, i definitely think mm-hmm. could beat out some of these really even like get out i mean get out is a great movie i'm not yeah lo- I, you know love love the movie but as far as like to put it on a list of yeah if you wanted to say maybe the best horror films of the past 20 years okay well yeah then it's yeah, in the conversation but as far as this 50 years 60 however far back you want to go i mean yeah of the scariest because that's what no. we're talking about we're not just talking about yeah like I mean, the best done or the coolest or the most original right. we're talking about like what are the actual scariest right. that your terror that you are your heart rate is elevated elevated yeah. the whole time you're watching and then you've got these big jump scares and you're really terrified right. so right. Yeah, it seems seems kind of strange. What was the one I just mentioned that? Um, well, we talked about seven, and then you said um, you, you just mentioned um, you just mentioned. Um, I'm going to draw a blank. Um, uh, you just you just mentioned. Um, you said you were talking about Get Out. You were talking about Get Out. Oh, Get Out, Get Out. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah Get yeah. Out. Great, great film. 
you know, loved it. But I it, was it really that scary? I mean, it certainly had scary elements. I mean, it certainly had that, you know, where you're you're thinking, oh my goodness, once it you find out, once he, once he gets kind of what happens to him, and you're you're like the trap. But there's not a lot of that. No, no. I mean, there a lot of it's just the the, the relationships before yeah. and that part yeah, more weird than scary, yeah. and so yeah. I mean, I can't. It, it, it seems kind of strange that it would even mm -hmm. um, be there. Um, and two, a, a couple ones that uh, the, these may be are, are just kind of personal uh, favorite ones that I always thought were terrifying were arachnophobia and fire in the sky mm -hmm. and arachnophobia if you i mean i it doesn't matter whether you're scared of spiders or not you know i'm not scared of uh you know tigers but i don't want to meet one in the dark alleyway right 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 exactly a piece of meat around my neck that's not a good you know yeah. it doesn't matter whether you're scared of them or not i don't want it biting my face off mm -hmm. and that's the kind of the, you know you arachnophobia man you got oh and and the crazy thing that they did with arachnophobia too, is they actually like the so the storyline kind of goes there's this giant spider from the Amazon that's this terrible you know huge thing that you know bird eating thing new species that they bring back accidentally, and it actually mates with a com more common spider and mm -hmm. produces this highly venomous smaller variety and so it actually like the little spiders. In that movie that are actually yeah. highly deadly like you have yeah, yeah. it's like that that look like that around here so it makes it even yeah you know, like oh there's the little ones too oh the little ones are gonna get you know and yeah. and so you know it, it it really ooh and the the part the end when the whole house is in fit you know and the, the yeah, spiders it, it, i mean it, it's 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 a terrifying movie. you don't you don't even have to be scared of spiders to me but it, I, again not not one that apparently was made a lot of people's lists of, of course, you know, no. and of course there are a lot of, you know, great, I mean, that, that's one that I always found mm -hmm. terrifying. And another one, as I said, was fire in the sky. We actually mm -hmm. had dark skies on here that mm -hmm. was um, um, another alien abduction right. movie and, uh, and which, which is a good movie and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly has, some scary moments but i think fire in the sky man yeah it, yeah it really had and the, and the scariest thing about that was it was based on this true, oh, story. true, true story yeah yeah and they actually had all had lie detector tests and the only one that didn't have so so just a quick thing of what fire in the sky is um these uh lumberjacks are up in in the the woods and they're coming back and they see what looks like a fire in the sky hence the name and so they go to check it out and you know they're thinking maybe this is a it's a forest fire or something and, mm -hmm. and so they go to check it out and this group of, of them go there and they see that it's a ufo hovering over this field and one of the guys which you know this is this is that moment like you know where you go no don't do that yeah, one of, one of the guys is like, I'm going to get out of the car and go check it out, you know, and, and you're like, every, all the other guys in the car, like the other six guys is like, no, no, you stay don't here, do that idiot, you know, but he goes out there and whatever and it zaps him and they he ends up getting taken off. Well, they, they end up thinking that they these guys have killed him. And so mm -hmm. they're all they all get lie detector tests. And this is all, to, you know, something that actually happened. And they think that they killed him. They all get lie detector tests. They all pass except for one. And he actually went back later and passed. And he was, they said that he, the reason he didn't pass, it was inconclusive because he was so keyed up. And, and so here's their testimony about what they saw, you know, so it's really just a scary. And then you've got the guy who comes back. And when he comes back, it's several weeks later. And he, I forget how long they'd said he like it had been since he had eaten, you know, the doctor, mm -hmm. like, like they're like, man, something, if they hoaxed this, man, it, they were. They were messing with people's lives. I mean, this was, right. yeah. I mean, it, they, yeah, this uh, guy had know. eaten in like a weeks or, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was something crazy. And, yeah. and so he comes back and then he starts having these flashbacks of what actually happened to him while he was, while mm -hmm. he was up there. And it's just, 
terrifying experiences. Yeah. So yeah. Another one that I think, you know, yeah. Why isn't that on the list? Right. And you can see some of these, you can see there's almost like this gap there, right? You talk about predator, you talk about fire in the sky, you talk about, you know, it's almost like this 85 to 96 range that mm. is kind of missing from this list. We have our early 70s, you know, we have our late seventies poltergeist and, and, you know, all these, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's Halloween, like, but then it's just like 85 to 96, nothing. Yeah. It's almost like a, the, this list had like the classic. Yeah. So the yeah. ones that are like the time established, like this is what you watch on Halloween. Yeah, ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. Th that have a franchise of blah blah blah. Okay, mm -hmm. we've got them, and then we've got the new ones that are popular. Right. And right. so that's kind of what the list seemed to be of the, these mm -hmm. fifty movies that they tested. But it's still, it's it's interesting. It's a good, good list. Yeah, it's a good yeah, list. It's a good list, and and it's interesting, like the jump scares and and just mm -hmm. seeing kind of that. Uh, hard data of of oh, oh that's a scary movie you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one that I'll, I'll uh, I, I think we probably should be getting off here but uh, yeah <laughs> one that I will give a uh, a shout out to to definitely check out on Netflix is called The Ritual if you're yes. looking for a good scary movie have you seen yes. this one yes. actually based based on a, a book uh, and uh, by a British author I believe. And uh, yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's got a really cool monster. And there's some there's one scene in particular that I'm thinking of, like where you're looking at these trees, and the guy's kind of like, and he's he's looking, and you're like, what's he looking at? And then you see this like black clawed looking hand just go and move away from the tree, you know, yeah. like where it's hand, and the dude just like. Ooh, and he starts running. You're like, and that's what you're thinking. You're like, run, yeah, <laughs> run, exactly. yeah. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, and it's got a cool creature uh, in it. Then it's different, yeah. you know. And it's and it actually has some heart, you know. It's actually you oh. care about the characters and right. And, and the what the kind of the basic premise was is that it's this group of guys that they each go on an adventure and every they alternate every year of who gets to pick what they're gonna do. And they're talking about they're out together at the beginning of the film and they're talking about what they're going to do. And the guy whose year it is to pick, he wants to go across, he wants to hike across Sweden, I believe it is, mm -hmm. or, or, or one of the countries, yeah. Norway, maybe. Yeah. And, uh, um, so he's talking about that. And then that guy actually goes, something happens and he gets killed. Mm -hmm. And so then his remaining friends are going up to honor his memory or going off right. to take this trip that he wanted to go on. And they take a, one of them gets hurt and they take a detour that they probably shouldn't take through the dark forest. And yeah, bad a shortcut. <laughs> bad stuff happens along the, the shortcut. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, definitely. Uh, if you're looking for a, for a really cool, scary movie, check out the ritual on uh it's it's a, a netflix movie i believe yeah i, believe it's I think so film. yeah so good film good recommendation all right well uh unless you have any others that uh you think we should talk about that should be on this list will uh, i think the only other one that you know comes to my mind you know when we're talking about that middle you know part that's kind of missing uh, event horizon i remember being mm -hmm. a very scary film you know, you had Sam Neill, you know, it's about a ship that um, uh, creates wormholes to, in order to travel through space. And it, they, they send it off and then it comes back and the crew's not there. And they're trying to figure out what happened to the crew. Only the crew isn't there, but something else is there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the problem is uh, for some people, they look at it as like a sci-fi again, right? Going back to those those things, but it really is, it's a horror film through and through. I mean, there's no, you know, there's no way you can't, you know, classify that as a horror movie. I actually saw something interesting about that movie the other day where they talked about how there was actually a whole different vision that the director had where it would, he wanted it to be, to I, I believe, be more of a horror film. And there was mm -hmm. more horror elements that he was incorporating in things and things that they shot and and mm -hmm. different stuff and so there was this talk about like can there be a director's cut and what the um what they said was that this when the movie was actually done 
they didn't have good um, uh, stuff to keep preservation. And so oh. the, the extra scenes and things that they shot, I think have actually been lost to time. Oh, wow. It's just the film just just, just yeah. yeah it's i don't know yeah i don't i mean wow. I, I i had saw an article about it you know so if okay. you yeah i mean it's looking yeah. look it up but uh, yeah it's it seems that like kind of a sad thing like we're here yeah. here's this really cool director's cut that could be this vision of like this what could have been with this movie because mm -hmm. that's event horizon is one of those movies where i was where i feel like it's i, I really liked it but i felt like it could have been yeah even bigger yeah. you know it yeah. could have been even better it could have right. been, it was like one of those ones like oh man it, that movie just could have been one yeah. of the best and it right. wasn't it didn't quite reach that and, right. and uh and i so it would have been really curious it would have been really cool to see like what would that director's cut have been mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah because it's almost you know because i i would play i mean you look at baba duke or something like that like i feel like event horizon will age better you know than Baba Duke, you know in the end like mm -hmm. in that sense but yeah yeah it, it would have been really interesting i didn't hear that i did see what they actually what else they included because there were parts that it seemed like kind of swiss cheese it's like okay we kind of jumped too quickly like this is it would have been better to have a little bit more story involved in it yeah for yeah. sure yeah well I think we've we've covered scary movies pretty well for yeah. for all the the Halloween uh, enthusiast viewers out there. Yeah. So uh, we're closer to Halloween than we are to Thanksgiving. So I'm I'm still in the Halloween mood. You know, I mean, I think that can continue on. So, uh, Will, it has been uh, great talking to you as always, and uh, we will hopefully be coming back to you real soon with with a lot of more. Uh, movies and book recommendations and uh just trying to turn you on to to cool uh cool stories thanks for having me ethan